In part one of this video, we talked about the equipment that we use on our recent wedding. And in part two here, we're going to take a look at a few photographs and show you how we use some of that equipment. It seems here in North Carolina, a lot of the weddings that we do in the summertime are in July and August. <laughs> Very hot months. And they're, they seem to be mostly outdoors as well. And this particular location, it's called Delightful Inspirations, a beautiful place in Raleigh. And the staff here is just tremendous. And as you can see, this was outdoors. Most of the weddings we have here are outdoors, unless there's a problem with the weather, and then they move it indoors. But as you can see also, we're pretty much stuck with the elements that were dealt with that day. But here we are out in the harsh sun, so we have to make do with the lighting situation. So we have to use as best as we can certain angles, certain things you can change. For instance, when a bride's walking back up the aisle here, they're pretty much stuck in harsh sunlight. So we have to make the best of that situation by using fill light. And then sometimes you can look for better angles and utilize some of the backlight as well. So let's take a look at some of these images. As I mentioned in part one, our equipment was myself and my assistant both had a Nikon D300. And my D300 was fitted with a Nikon 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 lens. And my assistant was using the same lens as well as two other ones. Uh, the other one was an 18 to 200 which I have on my Nikon D7000. And he was also using a, another lens with about, I think, half that range, but a faster lens. So let's take a look at some of these images. Before we start photographing, we try to go into the room where the reception is going to be and see if it's set up. And here it was pretty much set up, so we took a photograph here before people started coming in and all. But on this particular wedding, they wanted us to start three hours before the wedding, actually, because they wanted quite a few portraits done of the families and a couple of them, too, as well. And they wanted most of the portraits to be done ahead of time. Even the bride and groom met before the wedding. So once it came time for the reception, we didn't have to bother with always pulling them aside and getting some portraits. So a lot of that was all done out of the way. And like I said, they requested quite a few portraits. So here, when we got there, the groom was ready first. So we started here with the groom. And in this particular case here, I'm using my Nikon D300, which I had fitted with my 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 lens. Now, I find that instead of changing lenses, it's best to change camera bodies. So most of the time I'm using two bodies, sometimes three bodies, but the 300 had the 70 to 200 millimeter lens on, and that's what I started with here. And as you can recall on this location here, we had to find a good spot to do some of the portraits. We had to take them out of the harsh sun. So right next to the building, we had a nice little area that still allowed some light coming in from the back. And a lot of times, that's what I look for, light coming in from the back overhead, almost like a kicker or a hair light. So once we found that, our other light source was a reflector that was held by my assistant. So that's what we have here, a reflector taken with a D300, and the lens was set at F4 on this one zoomed in at 140 millimeters. ISO here was 200. And made some of these into black and white as well. And then we asked the best man to step in with his brother. And here I wanted to use my D7000. And on this body, it had the 18 to 200 millimeter lens. And to utilize the most background blur I can get with it, I set it to 5.6. It was zoomed at 135 millimeter. And then we had the groom's mom step in. We're still using the Nikon D7000. And here it was set to 5.6 at 110 millimeter range, 100 ISO. And again, we're using the 18 to 200 millimeter lens. 
Then we had that step in. The same setting, except here I took it out to 102 millimeter. Also at 5.6, same camera, same lens. And then we go back into the room where the bride is. She's in air conditioned room right before the wedding. It's kind of a small room, so we had to look for certain things that we can utilize in a photograph. She was fairly close to a window, so I used that window to pick up some of the light coming in from the side. As you can see, the one part of her veil is lit a little bit more. But just about all the photographs that we did in this room were with either a reflector or using bounce light off the ceiling. So here, just at the bride alone, we had her sit down. And this was, again, the Nikon D7000 set to 5.6. And again, the D7000 has on the 18 to 200 millimeter lens. And then we had the flower girl just sit next to her for a quick photo of that. Same camera, same lens, but this was zoomed to 44 millimeter. Just a few candidates here. And then we do some portraits of just the bride before the wedding. And here we start with the bride as a full length. And now we're back to the Nikon D300. And then with the full length here, I'm set to 95 millimeter. And remember on a D300, I have on the 70 to 200 millimeter lens. And this one here was set to F4.5, 95 millimeter range. We're at a thousandth of a second, ISO is 200. So we have a fairly decent background blur. However, we just zoomed in closer, actually all the way to 200 millimeter, and you can see the background blur quite a bit more. Same lens. We're set to 4.5. All of these, actually, we're just using a reflector as a fill. And again, we're at the spot here where there's a nice light coming in as a background, as a hair light just giving a little bit more dimension to the photographs. And then on the third one here, we just I wanted to do a profile, full length, and again, just using the reflector. Still a D300, 90 millimeter at 3.2. And then we just had the whole group come in for a quick group shot, and then the group having a little bit of fun. And then it's time to get just the bride and groom before the wedding starts. So after doing a few full lengths, I came in a little bit closer to about three quarter lengths. And then we're back to, again, using the D300. This is taken at 3.2. Lens was set to 160 millimeter zoomed, a thousandth of a second, ISO 200 if that matters. On this one here, I'm zoomed all the way to 200 millimeter. Same setting, F3.2. Same setting again, F3.2, so as the bride and groom look at each other. Again, the lens was set to 200 millimeter, full zoom. And then I move in a little bit closer for a close-up of just the bride and groom, and I just wanted to show a little bit of that color that was a little bit behind the bride and groom with the flowers. And notice how, since we're at full zoom here again, 200 millimeter, at f3.2, just using the reflector again, we get a nice, nice background blur. So this is just all natural light utilizing our reflector as a fill and adding a little bit of catch light in the eyes.